Welcome to Sailing Avanti. We are Gerard and Jacqueline sailing our 41 foot monohull Avanti around the world from Cape Town, South Africa. We have some good news today at least. We managed to find a marine shop in Anguilla, not far from where we anchored, that can import or that's willing to import the windlass for us from St. Martin. And they can actually get a better price than us because they are a commercial shop. They get a bit of a discount and in the end they quoted us on the same price for the windlass that, that we would have had to pay in St. Martin, including the shipping and a small percentage of duties. Luckily there's no VAT or um, additional duties or taxes that's added when you bring it from St. Martin to Anguilla. So we can get it here. It's only going to take a few days. There's a ship, there's a ship twice a week that comes in on a Tuesday and a Friday. So the next shipment should have our windlass. So that's good. It's an exciting day. Today we go pick up our new windlass. It is a scorcher of a day, um, but we're too excited. So we're going to walk. Apparently it's going to be a heavy walk back, but we're super excited about not lifting that anchor by hand anymore and just anchoring with um, confidence and not worrying that if we drag, if we'll get it up in time and all the sorts of worries that go with um, not having a windlass. We got a LaFrance vertical windlass with a drum, which is very similar to our old windlass, which was also a LaFrance. It's a thousand watt and it can pick up our 10 mil chain with our 20 kg spade anchor. We picked up our new windlass today from the shop that imported it for us from St. Martin. So I just got the box and luckily we got a lift. So it's about 20 kgs and it's quite a walk. So some lady was so kind to give us a lift up the hill and down so that I didn't have to carry it. So I just want to open it now to see if it's the right thing before we take it on the dinghy to the boat. So happy days. It's so shiny. The new windlass is very similar to our old one. Uh, I first got a price for just a replacement electric motor for our old windlass, but yeah, the electric motor, the price for the replacement part is very similar to the price for a new complete windlass. So I decided because our windlass is so old, probably 20 years, that uh, it's probably worth it to buy a new windlass and not just a new motor. So the one we bought is still a vertical windlass with a, a, a drum or a capstan, so it's very similar to the, to the old one. The footprint is very similar and the size. It is The motor is a little bit bigger, so I might have to cut a few things out to make it fit. But this is pretty much the closest that we could get. The wiring, it's also a three terminal motor, electrical motor, so the wiring will be very similar to the old one and the relay control box is also new but it's very similar to the old one with three wires um, coming in and just wires from the foot switches so hopefully the installation is is not that difficult I did measure it beforehand to see that it's not gonna be a problem but yeah so let's hold thumbs but yeah it's nice to have a brand new windless but now to install it next step i've started to remove the old windless the motor is already off as you saw last time and i've taken off the the gearbox that sits underneath the the deck as you can see it's quite uh yeah there's some corrosion and 20 years of salt build up here but at least it came off relatively easy so very happy that I didn't have to knock it and the windlass should just pull out now um, from the, well, the upper part of the windlass should just pull out so yeah quite loose and it's got a spacer because we've got a solid GRP deck the deck is not very thick it's about 10 mil 
So you need to have a spacer at the at the top and the bottom. So these old spacers are here. So hopefully I can repurpose them and use them for the new windlass. So now just to pull the chain through the, the old windlass and then see how the new one will or can be mounted on the deck. starting to fit up the new windlass so as you can see there's some spaces that was used between the old windlass and the deck just to increase the thickness a little bit the deck is solid GRP so it's only 10 mil thick now it looks like the new windlass will fit relatively nicely but the new windlass has some um, as a hub that's a little bit wider than the, the old windlass and it sits a little bit offset um, on the old pattern so I'm gonna have to modify these spaces and the holes in the deck and I've got limited tools here I only have a battery powered drill that's not that not that powerful um, and some hand tools so it's probably not gonna be pretty but it's gonna have to have to work I've managed to drill these spacer plates, which is PTFE material. I couldn't get my hole saw, my drill is a bit lightweight. So it's not very pretty, but the hub of the wind, new windlass is bigger than the old one. So I had to drill it out and some extra holes for the windlass counter sensor. The footprint of the new windlass is a little bit bigger. So it is going to overhang a little bit, but I don't have any of this material. so. I'll get some of this material somewhere else and make a bigger spacer plate. So there's one for the top and there's one for the bottom. So this will, will go there. The new windlass, the top part, will just drop in there. This little wire needs to go in. There is a gasket that goes in between these that I'll fit up. I just want to check the check the fit up before I do everything so there you can see the footprint isn't the same but I'm not gonna bother with that with that now then the, the bottom one will go underneath on the bottom and the new gearbox or the worm gearbox and the motor will screw will bolt onto that so that's what I'll do next I just need to grease all the parts and the fasteners. I like to grease them and put some sealant on here between the deck and the spacer plate so that as little as possible seawater gets in there. But yeah, the fitment is basically done so it's just bolting it up and greasing and sealing. The new windlass comes with a new control box as well, or relay box. This relay box just switches on and off the motor on and off, and it makes sure the motor goes either forward or reverse for picking up the anchor or letting it out. So the new control box is pretty similar to the old one, which I'll show you now. So the design hasn't changed in 20 years, um, but I'm going to install the new one and the old one is still working so we'll have a spare of that luckily the cabling is pretty much the same so no major wiring changes needed
the new control box is in and it's all wired up so it's almost time to close the circuit breaker and test it so holding thumbs that it all works the moment of truth so the windlass is hooked up engine is running so that we don't drain the batteries and um, yeah it should be working I've tested the voltage and there's voltage if I switch it so so yeah I'm gonna hit the foot switch and hopefully it runs voila the windless works the only thing that's left to do is to thread the rope and the chain back into the chain locker and the windlass is ready to go After a hard but successful day of work, it's time to have some beer. Today we're tasting the Red Stripe Lager. It's a beer that's that's highly available around the Caribbean. It's from Jamaica and with no local beer in Anguilla, we've decided to do this one that you can find basically anywhere in the Caribbean. At the moment, Red Stripe was bought a few years ago by Heineken, but it's still brewed in Jamaica. So yeah, it's a lager and it's pretty popular on the islands. Good tasting lager, uh, a little bit better I think than the other local lagers I've had. So in terms of the cost also $1.50 at the supermarket and about 5 US dollars at the, at the pub or 4 US dollars at some of them. And it's a good tasting lager, very light, 4.7% alcohol, so I would give it a 6 out of 10. Walking around the Road Bay Beach, we came across the wreck of Palmeed, where she's been laying comfortably since 1995, where Hurricane Louis told her to stay. Louis definitely left his mark with his roaring 230 km per hour sustained winds. Not surprisingly, it removed every last leaf of the trees. But what did drop George was that sandy ground, the little strip of land between the salt pond and road bay, completely disappeared for a while, but has happily returned with no human lives lost. On the same stretch of beach, we also see one of the latest Hurricane Irma skeletons and we are reminded that it's almost time to head back down south. After spotting a yellow zucchini in one of the shops, I knew it would work great with an interesting sauce I saw on Instagram and we mixed it with some pasta and chicken. So tonight's dish has got some peanut butter flavouring in it and some sesame seeds so it's really a kind of a thai style and yeah really tasty very good if you can uh, eat like as if you're in a restaurant on your boat so this morning we're prepping to leave anguilla so it's quite a busy morning we have to clear out uh, luckily we're using an agent here to clear out so to help us we just have to go to immigration and stamp out the agent takes care of all the customs paperwork you can't do it on your own here because the agent had to help us to clear in with the COVID tests so we have to go to land clear out with immigration Jackie has to go and get some last minute provisions for us at the supermarket 
I have to come back and quickly just dive the prop and make sure it's clean and then we on our way. It's been a very rainy morning, um, but we have hopefully cleared everything with customs. We're just waiting on the last email. We've done our shopping. And now it's just heading back. As soon as we've got that custom email, we're gonna try and see if there's a printer somewhere. Because <laughs> a lot of people prefer to, um, prefer to have the documents on um, in hand. Um, rather than on email, but here in Angola it's sent to you via email. So as soon as we have the document, we'll be heading out. We're getting travel. Come on, come on. Do feel like I can't you know? Do feel like I can't hear you? The weather looked pretty much how I felt inside. Anguilla was not a planned stop on our route, but it really left a mark. The beaches, the people, the super tasty food that we were able to experience will be remembered for a long time. Before we lift the anchor, we give Blasopi's bottom a good clean. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, comment or share it. Our Patreon link is given in the description below the video if you want to make a small contribution to these videos. Join us in the next episode as we head to Antigua.